Okay, in this video we're going to compare the Green's Literal Translation again, which uh, we use, or I preferably use, and um, as we read in the previous video relating to this, that J.P. Green was a King James Bible only scholar, and he decided to do the Literal Translation and, yes, tackle a lot of the so-called King James Bible errors that we went through in another video. But I'm just going to go through well, basically a couple of scriptures that um, mistranslate uh, the name Joshua and put Jesus in rather than Joshua. Um, both of them are speaking about the Old Testament uh, son of Nun, Joshua, you know, who delivered the Israelites into the Promised Land. And for some reason, even the King James Bible here, this is not a New Age Bible, we've done studies on New Age Bibles, the King James Bible is regarded um, as a high scholarly you know, word of God um, we know that there are more than one King James Bible uh, as King James Bible people know that, you know, I'm just explain, explaining it to the rest of Christendom and um, first of all we'll look at the book of Acts chapter 7 in the King James Bible and most of, I think all, pretty much of the other translations mistranslated and uh, we'll look at it just a few videos on YouTube about this, some anti-missionaries uh, quote things like this and um, oh it should be tackled it should be highlighted because either um, it's, 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 a, it's a grave error in the part of the King James Bible translators and uh, we know that there's a Hebrew names version as well this one is this one is quite dis disturbing both of them actually are quite disturbing possibly just trying to deceive um, Christians is sort of regarding a few doctrines we'll just look at so we'll read from uh, well we can read from it's not really regarding the doctrine, I mean, it's 42-43, Tabernacle of Molech. I believe this is the six-pointed star, some say it's the five-pointed star. Um, star of your God, Ramphan, okay? Our fathers, well, basically, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, the six-pointed star is related to, to Judah, so they can't be the, the true Jews, but in fact... You know, this has been going on in Judah for thousands of years, and, uh, you know, having this six pointed star really shows you that, they, yes, they are, most of them anyway, a large percentage of them, are actually Jews, according to Scripture. <clears throat> it's just they need to be born again, but they're carrying this, uh, they've been carrying this idol for thousands of years, and it is sort of, you know, related to sort of the seal of Solomon it's not really related to David I believe that's a deception but anyhow uh, yeah our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness as he has appointed speaking unto Moses that he should make it according to the fashion that he has seen okay now, now it's still talking about our fathers, which also our fathers that came after. So it's talking about the time of Joshua. So it should say, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Joshua unto the possession of the Gentiles. So it's talking about the promised land. You know, God giving the, you know, that portion of land to Israel, which was the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove out, remember, before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, right? Who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle. And it goes on just to, you know, just to explain about tabernacles, houses of God, places of worship, and so forth and so on. And we have churches today, we have synagogues today, and, you know, but it's... Uh, we know as born again Christians that the, the tabernacle of the Lord is our bodies when we're born again and when and uh, that the Spirit of God resides in man hallelujah it used to reside in the temple of God going back so this is just basically a teaching here and it's, it's talking about our forefathers that came and brought in 
with Joshua, not not Jesus. I don't know why it's saying Jesus here. Um, it's it's just very deceiving. It doesn't make much sense, but we can read it uh, in the Greens literal here or the KJ three going down. It's correctly translated. Um, which also we brought in our fathers having inherited with Joshua in taking the possession of the nations not just not just the possession of the Gentiles is being more specific so that's that gives clarity to the actual verse now now we know what the 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 apostle here in the book of Acts was talking about okay so he's making a similarity okay to the kingdom of God right that's that's what that's what sort of the, the the whole teaching is about okay it's about the kingdom of God and uh, it's not you know so I realize that there's there's a real deception there I don't really know how so-called biblical scholars skip over that and just don't even see that but you know as, as we've said we've shared umpteen times on here Yes, we're pro King James Bible. We are born again Christians, but we want to highlight the truth. And uh, there's there's been uh, there's been mistranslations uh, even in the King James Bible. And the next one we're going to go to is Hebrews four. Um. Now this one is talking about a day of rest, which is confusing, quite confusing to a lot of people. And go down. Hallelujah. Well, I'll read from, let's see, verse 4. For he speak a certain place of the seventh day. On this wise God did rest on the seventh day. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest... Again, there's a bit of an expansion in other commentaries if if you read those um, about the meaning of this actual verse. Seeing for it remains that some must enter therein and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. So you get some entering in because of belief. They're entering into a rest. Like perhaps in the days of Joshua, you know, they believed and then they entered into that rest at that time but then it's still saying that there's a rest for the people of God again he, he limiteth a certain day saying to David today after so long a time as it said today if you enter hear his voice harden not your hearts and then it should say again it's talking about Joshua but that it translates it as Jesus so, so let's see what it should say it should say he again remarks out a certain day seeing in David today after so long time today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts for if Joshua gave them rest then he would not afterwards have spoken of another day so he's talking about okay the day of the Lord or the day of the Messiah right so he's talking he's, he's, he's basically given a, a teaching again about how Joshua brought them into the promised land that was a type of rest for the people of God he's talking about the he's tying it into the Sabbath in this teaching for he entered into his rest he himself also rested from his works as God rested from his own yeah uh, therefore let us exhort ourselves to enter into that rest not only anyone following the same example of disobedience okay so it's saying that when you when you accept so it's sort of a teaching here about there's a spiritual rest in the Messiah and the kingdom of God, okay? Jesus said, oh, you know, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest. Hallelujah. And then it correctly it correctly um, translates the name Jesus here. That's where it should be. Even the great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us also so, so it makes more sense here, you know. So he's he's likening Joshua to, again, it's a teaching about the kingdom of God and the Sabbath rest, 
And uh, there, it does actually see, of course, that there remains a Sabbath for the people of God. There remains a rest day. Right? It's just a, it's, it's not talking about that Jesus came to change the day to Sunday or something like that. But but that's that's what I believe in the Hebrews here. Why they translate if Jesus gave them rest, and you know, after it was spoken of another day, this is what Christians. So I'm a Christian as well, but let's say Sunday keeping Christians try to quote this verse in defense of their um, first day observance rather than the Sabbath day. Some people count that on the Gregorian calendar as the day before that, which again, it's a, it's a pagan day. I'm not going to mention it. It begins with S, Sat, you know. But if you're born again, you study the Word of God, you, you realize that the rest days are the new moons and Sabbaths, which are listed in the Bible and that the Holy Spirit will lead you to in faith when you're actually praying about it in faith God will reveal it to you in faith and then you might slip back onto the unbelief uh, that the people that didn't inherit the promised land and therefore they won't inherit the kingdom of God because they misinterpret the word of God and they discount the fact that even though God still had a rest day and it's still a rest and we enter into it by faith in the Messiah you know it's like you know it's made for man man is not made for the Sabbath the Sabbath is made for man so when we become born again this is a special day for us that we you know um, seek the things of God do the things of God and it's a real delight to us if we're saved if we're not saved, the Sabbath is a bit of a drag. You know, it's like, oh, we're bored. We want to go out partying. We want to go drinking, you know. So it's like the the Gentiles, you know, the, the unbelief. But God is saying that, and, and this teaching, if you, if, you, if you understand it, it's like the days of Joshua, you know, they entered into that rest because of faith, you know, because of Joshua and Caleb, you know, were the two spies that went and spied out the land and said, yes, it's possible to take the land. And so there's the spiritual connotations and teachings regarding this that are missing in the church, that are just not there, that your local pastor or, or Pastor Big Breeks or whatever his name is, you know, that's raking in all your cash every week is not telling you that this is mistranslated in the King James Bible if I was you, I'd just run out right now and get a Green's Literal Translation. You know, um, you, you're not paying that much money for them. I think you can pick one up for about 20 or $30 nowadays and about £20 or so on eBay or somewhere like that. And um, Or you can go directly, I think, to a website and get it. I'm, I'm not a salesman here, but I'm, I'm really telling you that you need... A good translation of the Bible and um, this is the one I recommend at the moment it's the one that's least affected also by the Mandela effect this is not a Mandela effect this is just a uh, I would say a deceitful uh, translation and even the King James Bibles you'll find it in most other versions as well because they're trying to argue that the Sabbath is the new the, sorry the Sunday is the new Sabbath day or whatever whatever they come up with is sort of a bit twisted and it's not uh, the original meaning or intent that the apostle wrote the book of Acts in hallelujah so I hope this has been edifying to you brothers and sisters and remember keep praying in tongues and uh, we can edify one another when we do our bible studies and meet together hallelujah praise the lord